Welcome to Allie's Attic, where you never know what kind of surprise you'll find in my attic. I'm your host, Allie, and today my surprise is a man who wears many different hats, and I'm going to let him tell you all about that. He is a national security and political analyst and author. He splits his time between New York and Moscow. He's originally from Savannah. I, yeah, I'm going to let you tell the rest, Todd. Please welcome Al Todd Wood. Hello. Oh, hi. Thanks for having me on, Ali. I appreciate it. Um, uh, I, uh, to all your listeners in the UK and Canada and the US, uh, thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. Thank you for coming on. Um, so, basically, I'm going to let you tell us your story, because it's quite the story. You've had quite the journey. So, um, I guess start growing up in Savannah and going from there. Sure. Well, I uh, grew up on an island off the coast of Savannah. It's called Isle of Hope. Um, funny enough, the reason it was called that was because during the malaria epidemics, you know, in a couple centuries ago, they would all go out on the islands to try to get away from the disease, and actually that's where the mosquitoes were. So it didn't work so well. They just didn't realize what was going on. But uh, it was kind of a huckleberry thin atmosphere, you know, some dirt roads uh, on the marshes with the boats and the shrimp, shrimp boats and everything. And so I enjoyed that. I, I wanted to be an architect, and I had my room actually at a, a school called uh, Georgia Technology. Technology in Atlanta. Uh, this guy kept coming around asking if I wanted to go to the Air Force Academy, which I really had no desire to do, but he kept pushing me, and I did all the interviews and the medical and all that, and I'd kind of forgotten about it. And I get a call from Washington one day in high school, and they said, Are you going? So I, I ended up going to school in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and I got an aeronautical engineering degree out of the Air Force Academy and then went to flight school. Ended up, uh, strangely enough, a few years later in Anchorage, Alaska, and was flying search and rescue up there. So did that for three or four years, and then went back to flight school and uh, learned a new aircraft, a special operations helicopter, and ended up flying Silk and Six and Delta Force around the world for three years, different places. Uh, wow. Literally, every so we'd get on, we'd get a beep, and we'd have to show up at the airfield. We had beepers back then, and we'd get on the airplanes, and the helicopters would be folded up and back, and we'd meet the ground commanders and planned missions and download satellite photos and we didn't know where we were going when we were getting back but it was an interesting life but definitely for a young man and I, I left uh, that business uh, when I turned 30 and, and went to Wall Street for a while so that, that's how that's what happened in Savannah. <laughs> wow probably some things that you didn't want to see um, and what a switch from going to that to Wall Street and what did you do on Wall Street you were in the financial world right? Yeah, it was strange because I, I got out of the Air Force and I wanted to, I didn't really know what I wanted to do actually. And I had a, a relative who was fairly big in business in Atlanta and he set me up with a bunch of interviews uh, with investment banks, consultant firms, attorneys, uh, you know, just a lot of different types of businesses. And I was sitting in the office of an investment bank in Atlanta and uh, the guy was reading my resume and he said, oh, you flew? And I said, yes. And he, he asked me what and I told him and he pointed to a picture on the wall of the same aircraft he'd flown in Vietnam and said, you're hired. So that, oh, wow. that's, how I got me in, that's, that's how I got me in investment banking business. But I ended up traveling a lot all over the world, uh, primarily in all sorts of jurisdictions, you know, like the Channel Islands, uh, the Caribbean, Hong Kong, uh, places like that, where I figured with, if there were islands with beaches with lots of banks on them, they'd be a great place to do business. So I did that for almost 20 years, focusing on emerging market debt and trading for a lot of these offshore banks, hedge funds, central banks, that type of thing. So I did that uh, up until about 2011, and then I decided to reinvent myself for the third time and, and started writing books, and that turned into a journalism career. So, and um, I actually started the, the first one, which was called Currency, commuting into Wall Street from Connecticut, an hour and a half on the train one way. And so that developed over about a year, and then uh, the, the trading business was just getting very difficult, so I decided to move on. And I left Wall Street, uh, published my first book, and have written five more since, four more, and it's turned into a uh, closing career. I got a call from the Washington Times, which wanted me to do some writing on Russia, where I had been spending a lot of time once I left. I, I used to trade a lot of emerging market debt, and I studied Russian in college. Oh, okay. So it just fascinated me, the culture, and uh, it, it was just something I had wanted to do. So I started spending time over there and writing for the Moscow Times, and then uh, the Washington Times called me, and now I have a column with them that comes out every day. So it's, uh, 
again, wasn't planned, but it just, you know, you close one door, another one opens. So that's kind of how my career developed. Wow, that's amazing. Um, now, Moscow. When I heard that you mm -hmm. spend your time there, I mean, obviously with the Moscow mm -hmm. working there, um, what is, mm -hmm. like, is it really different from America? Is it, I mean, we hear horror stories all the time about how it is over there. Um, what is it really Moscow like? Is, uh, that, that, that's a, uh, a misnomer. I mean, Moscow, you have to realize, is an oasis in the middle of Russia. It's where all the power is, all the billionaires are there. It's a very modern um, city. For instance, all the trains, all the subways, all have Wi-Fi. Everything works. It's beautiful. Um, it's safe. Now, of course, the rest of Russia is not like that, but Moscow is really like an adult playground because they have all these oligarchs and they spend hundreds of millions of dollars on the parks and it's beautiful. So uh, I love it there. Awesome. Uh, and so I spend a few months a year there. Okay. Well, cool. That's good to know because when I heard that, I was like, wow. <laughs> um, now, um, you've written two nonfiction, which is basically, I guess, your time wherever, I mean, it talked about what you did where you were and now all your books are fiction and they have romance and mystery and they're thrillers and they're amazing um so all those books are coming from what you've gone through basically right and yeah you... the first four books were were fiction actually historical oh, okay. fiction that are related to current events so uh, but you know so a lot of the I guess scenarios in the books are factual, but the characters are not. Uh, mm -hmm. They're fiction. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of my experiences, obviously, in the books. Yeah. Uh, the last one I wrote was called Lost Bastards. It was a gentleman um, in San Diego, California, contacted me and said, "Do you want to write a book about my father?" And I, I you know, I get a lot of these requests, and I, I said, "Sure, send it to me." So he sent me the information, and the more I learned about it, this was an amazing story where. A uh, guy was his father was a 21 year old corporal in the U.S. Army in Berlin, and they actually sent him and 27 other Americans on a secret mission into North Korea, uh, now the DMZ, between North and South Korea, uh, to test the technology, a radar test technology. And they were sent by the forerunner of the NSA, which and, and they didn't tell the rest of the regular army they were there. So here, these 28 Americans get stuck on the top of a hill with a bunch of South Korean and they get overrun by thousands of the Chinese, so they fought them for two weeks, and half the Americans died, but the, the story is just phenomenal, what they went through. So I ended up writing the book for him, and uh, now we're out in L.A. looking to uh, make a movie of that one as well. So there's, there's a lot going on. Yeah, there is a lot going on. Now, um, I urge everybody to go to your website. I urge everybody to purchase your books because they're amazing. Now, let's talk about currency. You, you. you want to make it into mm -hmm. a movie. And you, if you go to your website, um, you have a fund going, a GoFundMe. You've raised about six thousand mm -hmm. dollars so far. So talk a little bit about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So, um, you know, movies are expensive, and I'm not sure exactly which way we're going to go. If we're going to do it ourselves, or you know, sell the rights to a studio or whatever. We're still in the early stages of that, but uh, we are raising money to fund. Um, this effort, and we're giving away uh, downloads of all the books for free with the contribution on the website. So um, it's there on the GoFundMe page. So they'll just be sent to you via coupon and download them. And actually, you can be reading all summer with those. So it's a it's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Um, but the movie process is moving forward. Currency is actually the book rights have been sold to a large publisher in the U.S. and they'll be re-releasing the book in stores in January. So. It's no longer a sale, for sale in print. You can get the audio version, but the print books, um, e-books, won't be available again until later in the year when the new it comes out, new edition to another publisher. Okay. Now you had mentioned the rest of the books are available. Yeah. <clears throat> now you mentioned that if you are in Canada or the UK, um, the credit card part won't work. You have to do it through PayPal, correct? Right. Yeah. Right. And, and they could just contact me on the website. If you go to the Need a Speaker page, there's a contact button there. You can send me an email. Let me know if you want hardback or softback uh, and which books. We also have some uh, package deals on there as well for the print books. And all these will be signed, and uh, we'll ship them to you. And, you know, it takes a little longer to get to other countries, but we'll get them out there. Yeah, it'll get there. Okay, well, that is awesome. That's a really good deal because your books are amazing. Now, let's talk a little bit about well, the, politi you. the political climate right now, because I know you are, you know, mm -hmm. involved in it. 
Um, mm -hmm. I'm not in America. I'm in Canada. But obviously, mm -hmm. what happens mm -hmm. in America does, you know, affect us to a certain extent. Sure. Um, how do sure. you how do you think things are going to go, or how how are they right now? Politically, um, well, um, you know, I'm uh, I would call myself a fiscal conservative. Um, I don't really care what you do in your bedroom, but I, I would like the budget balance. You know, I would like the, the nation protected, that type of thing. So that's my worldview. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, saying that, I think that we've had a, a very weak uh, executive branch for the last two, two terms with Obama, and I think there's a lot of change coming. That needs to happen. A, a lot of it is scary, but it, actually it's just going back to what we used to have. So it's, uh, as far as, you know, strong defense, uh, strong borders, and just making sure that the guy in Ohio at the plant can have a job and a way to feed his family. So that that's that's what's happening in America. It, it looks tumultuous, and because really developed a, a culture here over the last decade, uh, you know, just uh, promoting a large government that gets more and more into your life, and you know, I'm against that. So that that's where I see the political climate at the moment. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, it's good to know. Now, one of my questions, I've always wanted to write a book. I probably never will. Um, mm -hmm. The process, like, I mean, you hear about writers mm -hmm. taking off to their cabin or, mm -hmm. you know, going somewhere where they're secluded and then just writing and writing and writing. Mm -hmm. What is your process like? Well, the first book that I said was written on the train and back and forth to New York. Uh, the morning I used to have to get in uh, before the London markets or, you know, at the London Open, which is very early. And so... Um, I would, the trains would be empty and it was a great place to write. I did a lot of preparation for that book. I laid it out on a computer program. I, you know, spent a lot of time, because it's really three stories that converge together in the end of the book, uh, started different time periods. And so that one was, I was very, uh, I guess, meticulous about, but the rest of them, I stopped doing that. They just tend to flow out of me. So it doesn't, for me, it's not like I have to, uh, really work to put a story down, an outline or anything. It's, I just start writing and I try to write two or three thousand words a day and you know, a month or two later you'll have a, a good book. So that's, so I, I don't really have a process anymore, it just happens. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I wish it would happen like that for me. Now you're also a speaker, like you mentioned on your website. Um, now you've, mm -hmm. you've spoke about how overwhelming debt threatens national security and how to save your children's mm -hmm. future before it's too late. Um, understanding mm -hmm. the road to peace, decoding Russia, and mm -hmm. what is mm -hmm. hybrid warfare and how can it kill you? So um, if mm -hmm. people do want a speaker, they can contact you on your website. Yes. Okay. Well, um, like I said, I'm going to have your website up on my website. I'm urging everybody to purchase your books. They are absolutely amazing. They take you away. Um, my mom is sitting here with me right now. She's also my manager. She is one of your hugest fans. <laughs> Oh, so, fantastic. Yeah. It's and, nice to hear I have fans in Canada. Thank oh, you, you do. Much. Yeah, you do, definitely. Um, and um, like I said, your GoFundMe, I mean, I think it's a really good cause. I think Currency would be an amazing movie. And um, I urge everybody to help out. And I thank you so much for coming on my show and taking time out of your busy life because it must be crazy. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Holly. Anytime. I, I love doing interviews. I, I've done probably more than any other author a lot. So oh, wow. I do them all the time. I, I enjoy them. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing your journey with us. I mean, like I said, you wear many different hats and all the different things you've done just overwhelm me. <laughs> I don't know how you go through life. Um, I think you're totally awesome. And now I'm heading to the bookstore for Lost Bastards. I didn't even realize it was out because it came out about the time I got hit by a car. So I'm just starting to read again, which is fun because uh, my, my eyes aren't tracking. Well, thank right. you. Um, the bookstore can order it. Um, or like I said, we can ship it to you off the website with the PayPal. So either way. Okay. But, okay. Um, or the, the audio book's not out yet. The ebook is everywhere. Actually, it's only on uh, Kindle at the moment, actually. Oh, okay. But um, it will be in the other channels eventually, you know, iTunes and all that. Okay. okay. But uh, in the audio we're producing as we speak, so it's probably going to be three or four months before that's out. It takes a little time. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now, do you do you do the audio? No, I hire uh, artists. I learned a long time ago that that's not what I'm good at. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I bring in, you know, and, and you can bring in, I have a great, group that does like multiple voices, the latest books have been through them, like Motherland is about to be released, and 
there's probably 25 different voices in the in the audio so i'm excited about that oh wow that's mm-hmm. cool i've honestly never listened to an audiobook i'm so old school i have to read it um Okay, cool. so yeah, I'm going to have your website up on my website. I'm urging everybody to go. I'm so happy you came on my show. Um, I've been very, very nervous all week because <laughs> I knew you were coming on. <laughs> um, and like I say, anytime, like anytime you want to come back, let me know. You're on Twitter, so if people want to contact you on Twitter, they can find you there, Al Todd Wood. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining me. You bet, Ali, anytime. Okay. And thank you for joining me on Ali's Attic. Keep checking my website because you never know what kind of surprises you'll find in my attic. Cheers. Cheers.